you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, I didn't hear that applause. If you think it's easy to stand here and speak, I'm going to invite somebody to just come and speak at that, at that age. It's not easy at all. Howard, thank you so much. That was a beautiful poem. Well, speaking now, our next poem, or our next, yes, poem is going to be delivered by a man. I see a lot of men here. We talk about female education, and somehow this might seem like a female rights movement. Uh, but I can tell you that, you know, female rights might not be achieved if you do not get cooperation from the men. For all the men in the house, can we give it up for them, ladies? For all the men who have given support, because I'm sure I haven't... <laughs> I haven't asked Professor Grace Alele Williams, whom I'm very, very honored to be able to even call her name here, but I'm sure if we ask her, she might tell you of many men who helped her up along the line, maybe starting from her father, I don't know, but I'm sure some men might have been responsible for you know, ensuring she got the education that she got. So we thank all the men that are here. Our next poem is going to be delivered by a man, D.K. Chukumerije. This poem is titled, Where She Goes. There is a fragility that is strength. The fragility it takes to thread the eye of a needle. To sit up at night, waving a fan over the sweltering body of a younger sibling to tell him stories over and over again of the swift-footed hare and the slow-footed tortoise of that child who deaf to the warnings of its parents went and married an evil spirit simply because it had borrowed the body parts of beautiful people stories that show this young boy with his round eyes and crooked teeth that show him that narrow path which if he diligently follows would lead him unerringly to becoming a man yes there is a fragility that is strength the fragility it takes to watch a brother go off to war, to cry through the night, but get up in the morning to hold the pillars of house and home so when the destruction is done, there is somewhere left to begin again from. The fragility it takes to be sent to the kitchen like you belong there, to have no one ask you, what do you want? Where do you want to go? Because your life is a script and you are not its writer. And in spite of all this, to smile an implacable smile and get up, before the sun rises over all the things you have to do for others, all the things you have to do for custom, all the things you have to do to, for tradition to get up before the sun rises with only the light of a flickering candle to guide you to get up and do something for yourself. Yes, there is a fragility that is strength. When a young girl gets up, earlier than everyone else, stays up later than everyone else so she can find time to prepare for school. I tell you, in those hands that must first draw water for sleeping boys, on those shoulders that must first carry wood to the cooking place, upon that head that must first hawk canoe on the open road rests the future of a nation. For a woman's mind, unchained from the mortar, released from the broom, emancipated from the mop, is as capable as any other of solving the mysteries of the universe. For her womb will bear our children, no doubt, but it is her thoughts that will mold them. So let those who are genuinely concerned about tomorrow, let them worry now about the thoughts of the girl child. For where that mind goes, as she sits there, absent-mindedly rocking your baby to sleep, as she sits there, absent-mindedly stirring your pot of soup, as she sits there, absent-mindedly washing your pair of socks, where that mind goes, there will humanity go. Do not be in doubt that the fragility of the woman is the strength of mankind. Treat her right. Today I'm reminded of the songs 
of an old European folk song that goes like this. Where have all the young girls gone? Long time passing. Where have all the young girls gone? Long time ago. Where is the lingering fragrance on our sofa chairs? The love and laughter in our evenings. The softness at our dinner tables, the tangled hair in our empty baths. Where are the scented dimples in our quiet pillows? The ribbons scattered on our sitting room floors, the bunny slippers under our reading tables, the crumpled skirts by our bedroom doors. Where is the wafted singing on our Saturdays? The whispered conversations in the darkness, the shriek and gasp of make-believe stories. This house is empty. Where are our daughters? For the earth shook yesterday with the sounds of men wailing in agony for the souls of lost sons and daughters as the night was filled with the shrieks of mothers. Listen, sorrow always begins in a deafening howl but ends in a whimper. When the soul has emptied itself of defiance, the deepest sadness is always silent, but you can hear it if you listen. It is Chibok. That soft sound of sobbing outside the window, it is Chibok, who has driven herself mad searching for her daughters, it is Mubi. That soft sound of sobbing outside the window, it is Mubi, whose sons were murdered in their sleep, it is Mubi, who stands at the door refusing to shut it, refusing to accept that his children are lost. Listen. It is Bama, it is Guza, it is Buninyadi, and the sound of the wind hurtling through deserted villages. It is Agatu, it is Joss, it is Uzuwani, and the sound of a morning shattered by the screams of dying dreams. Listen. It is a man whose name was Emmanuel, a boy whose name was Sham Su Din, a wife who left home and did not come back, a mother who died in the arms of her children. It is Nyanya whose wounds will never heal, Nyanya whose heart will always feel for a girl, took her dreams and went to school, but on that day she did not come back, Lord, why? If for every life we've lost, a star was extinguished, by now the night should be empty of light. If for every life we've lost, a word was written, by now all books should have run out of pages. Lord, why do the innocent die? Caught between single-minded killers and double-minded leaders. Why is evil resolute while righteousness wavers? Why is one man able to believe he can destroy a nation while a hundred thousand doubt they can save it? Why is love weaker than hate? Why is anger deeper than faith? Why is it so hard to light a candle and keep it burning through the night? Why do the innocent die? Listen. I do not want a house in Asokoro. All I want is for you, and you, and you, to listen. Thank you. Two poetry recitals, first by young girl Hawa Abubakar. Each talking about the girl child, her uniqueness, her strength, her vulnerability, and the need to protect the girl child. D.K. Chukumirije caps it all when he says the fragility of a woman is the strength of mankind. He also remembers the boys killed in Buniyadi and the bomb blast victims in the northeast. We're apt where the girl child goes, the nation goes, treat her right. Why does one man think it can destroy a nation? And a hundred thousand not think that they can save it. Those are very powerful words. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, an applause. I quickly invite, well, she has many titles, but I simply call her Auntie Obi. <laughs> Auntie Obi. <laughs> Thank you for being a mom 
Ever since I lost my mom, I've had many moms, but this is an